Listen, so we want to tackle one of the big questions here, and that's radiometric dating, okay. because radiometric dating has been uh, touted for years as absolute proof that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, which then they would extrapolate and they would say, well, that the universe is about 14 billion years old. And this almost completely precludes the whole idea. It, it means that the history that we read in God's Word would be incorrect. Right, right. And so I think uh, that's a very good way of phrasing it because even though I think a lot of Christians, especially if they grew up in the church, uh, they feel like, well, that's kind of a side issue or it's right. kind of complicated, it's kind of hard to explain, I'm not really comfortable with it. And so they, uh, they tend to shy away from it. And they can still have very strong faith, you know, without ever even really thinking about that issue. But uh, 1 Peter 3, 14 through 15 uh, tells us, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Hmm. And the reason to me those are particularly important verses is you'll have a lot of people that, uh, you, know, you talk to your average atheist and they don't want to say, oh, you, you silly Christians, you don't believe that life just made itself. Because people think about it like, yeah, that is kind of absurd to think life could just make itself. Or, yeah. you know, you, you know, but, and so if they're trying to intimidate us, if they're trying to, uh, you know, persecute us or trying to make us, you know, just... Um, I don't, I don't feel you, uneducated. Yeah, feel yes. uneducated. Then a lot of times they'll pick on this radiometric dating. And so uh, what I really want to point out, and we'll do that throughout the show, is it's the radiometric dating is with all methods, and we'll be talking about certain methods today. Mm -hmm. It's the data is uh, the measurements taken can be very accurate. Okay. And so a lot of times the media will tout the accuracy of the measurements that are actually taken, but typically those are just ratios of isotopes. Yeah. And then a lot of assumptions need to be applied to those ratios to then try to get an age from them. And so that's the, if there's one takeaway from this whole show, it's just, it's not, we're not questioning the accuracy of the measurements. Yeah. It's the assumptions that are applied to those measurements. And it really depends, does the person want to assume atheism, assume the earth is extremely old, assume things against the Bible, or are they willing to at least consider that the Bible is God's inerrant word? That's where I want to start and, and just briefly summarize in a minute. Why are the millions of years important for so many people in their thought process? Today? And how did it get inserted into our scientific community? So I think it really started out, uh, to me at least, in the 1800s. Uh, we started to realize that even then that life was really complicated. And people tried to pretend there were simple cells and you know, little bags of salt. But we were starting to out, no, things are really complicated. But mathematically, if there's an infinite number of years, then you know, things that just are totally make no sense. You could say, well, that could happen because I had an infinite number of years. Oh. But really in the 1930s is when we started figuring out, no, the universe had a beginning. And so at that point, it was kind of end of story for the atheist and the evolutionist because mm -hmm. now these things are so improbable that it actually, it doesn't matter if, if the universe is, you know, a day old, a hundred years old, a billion years old, a quadrillion years old. Uh, as soon as you have a finite age, you know, yeah, things aren't going to evolve. Things aren't going to happen the way that we um, say they will. Now, yeah, you know, they've gone to say, well, maybe there's an infinite number of universes. They, they keep uh, kind of play that. Multiverse. Yeah, multiverse. Okay. Thing. Because again, if once you have infinity, then you can make all kinds of absurd things seem possible. But so, but, but but doesn't this mean that they're using time as a magical supernatural ingredient, almost like a god, to try to make improbable things probable? Yeah, I think it's it's just kind of a way to fuzz the issue, try to get people to uh, kind of. Uh, check their brain at the door. And I, I like, that's what I actually really like about the Star Wars movies. You know, uh -huh. it starts out, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Because yeah. that immediately tells me that, hey, I don't have to think about this. It's it doesn't have to make, story. it doesn't have to make any sense because it can be a fun story because it was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And we all know <laughs> that anything can happen there. So, so it's, a, it's kind of the same thing with these long ages, pretending that maybe, uh, you know, you know, stars make themselves, planets make themselves, yeah. life makes themselves. Hey, it was a long time ago. Hey, you know, Whatever. Anything's possible. Yep. Yep. All right, so to start with, I'm going to ask you a question. Is there any way to fit old ages into the Bible? And then we'll discuss it from there. It, there really isn't. I mean, if you go through and, you, and uh, look at the language, and uh, the, um, it, it just it can't be made to fit. I mean, and, and the way I like to look at it is if I read Genesis, you know, what is, well, first of all, it's what is God trying to communicate? But then if you really think about it, you know, how could God have made it any clearer that mm. he meant six literal days? How could God have made it any clearer that he meant a global flood? I mean, Bible historians <clears throat> and experts will all look at the verbiage in the Genesis account, and they'll say that you've got 
a number associated with the word yom or yep, day, yep. associated with the words evening and morning, right. which in context throughout Scripture always means a literal 24-hour day. Oh, yeah, yeah. So why are we trying to compromise? So yeah, you said that there's no need to compromise because the earth, according to the Bible, is not as old as we're being told. Right, and so, but I think you're right. There's this pressure, and again, people not wanting to be looked down on or people not wanting to be intimidated to try to compromise. And so they'll say, well, maybe the Bible's been mistranslated. But okay. yeah, you think about that, if, the, if you read Genesis, straightforward reading, and it's been so grossly mistranslated that God really meant to tell us, you know, 14 billion years ago, the universe just made itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you then, couldn't believe what anything. What about the else. gospel? Exactly, you couldn't believe anything throughout the rest of the Bible either. Everything's compromised. Right. All right. Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Let's look at radiometric dating methods. Uh, and it's, first of all, I mean, that's a big word. Explain what that is and how you can use that to try to determine an age. Okay, so, so the idea is you look at things, um, uh, certain elements have half-lives, and that's one assumption. We can measure the half-life today, and we used to assume that those half-lives have always been constant. Now, through measurements of medical isotopes, uh, reported primarily initially at Stanford and Purdue, but now elsewhere, we're seeing that those decay rates fluctuate even now. And so that assumption of a decay rate being constant, we know that that's not true. Now people will say, well, those fluctuations are so small that they really don't affect the dating method. But the point is, is if those fluctuations are occurring now when everything is physically stable, yeah, what might have been happening during creation week and the flood. So, but don't want to uh -huh. get too far ahead, but what will happen is say, um, certain elements, say uranium will decay into lead. Okay. would be one example that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more. Well, if I assume that say a sample starts out and it's pure uranium, uh -huh. and I know how fast that uranium decays to lead, mm -hmm. then I could estimate, you know, how, I mean, in other words, what the half-life of that uranium is, then I could estimate, you know, how long it might take uh -huh. for that amount of lead that I'm also measuring that sample to have formed next to the uranium. And if so that's, the decay rates have always remained 100% consistent. Exactly, yeah. So it's always the same now. And so again, one of the um, assumptions, there are many, many assumptions that go into the radiometric dating. But again, to me, especially given what we've learned in the last 10 years, we've, we've always known you can change radioactive decay rates, but it usually takes some fairly extreme conditions. Okay. But now we see evidence that they're naturally fluctuating, uh -huh. very tiny amount now, but they're still fluctuating. We don't understand why. Uh -huh. But given that, then again, it's, it's the, um, uh, it kind of throws that absolute assumption out the window. Once that assumption uh, goes away, then uh, again, it's very straightforward to have the radio, the amount of radioactive decay we see, the radiometric you know, dating that we, or the radiometric effects that we observe to be very fully consistent with the Bible.